be mind blowing. I can't wait to see it when it comes out. Because I guess I can't have an advanced look at it. Um, but uh, Aaron's going to answer some questions that you guys might have. Maybe give us some information, updates first, and then any questions you guys have, we'll be up here for a good 30, 40 minutes or whatever, and um, get, get all your questions taken care of. So here's Aaron Bieber, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I got. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that were asking. They wanted some of these special edition stickers that we had, uh, and I found a couple right before I left. So I brought. I brought some of these uh, one in a billion live stickers for you guys, um, and then I also. Uh, not sure how to do this, but I did find one of the t-shirts that was uh, limited edition. They like sold out in like 10 minutes on our website or whatever, and everyone was freaking out. So I did have uh, I did have one of those as well for you guys. So I don't know how we're going to do that. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe a uh, best question is voted by you guys. So we'll see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, yeah, I'm guessing you guys are here because you already know a little bit about the movie. But a lot of questions have come up about it. Uh, a lot of folks in Germany seem to think that uh, Big Pharma is behind the film. That makes absolutely me, me. no sense. Um, obviously, some people used to think Big Tobacco was behind it uh, because I don't know why they would think that when we're talking about a billion people dying from smoking. So, yeah, a lot of weird little uh, questions out there. Um, it makes sense, you know, because why is there a movie being made about, about vaping, right? I mean, what the heck? But if you guys look around, a lot of people are interested in this topic. I mean, it's a big debate, probably one of the biggest biggest healthcare debates of all time um, and, it, and it doesn't make a lot of sense unless you kind of follow the money and you follow the pride and so that's what we did so um, yeah enough of an intro does anybody got any questions to kick this off all right right in front here what made you make this movie since you don't smoke or vape yeah so I don't smoke or vape and uh, the question I get frequently is well why are you making this movie well um, as a director in the film industry, I have a production company called Attention Air Media, and we like to make we like to make projects that are going to be watched, and we like to make things that are going to be hot topics. And this is clearly a hot topic, and this will be actually our first feature-length movie for theaters. And so we wanted to do something that would be big, you know, a really big topic, and you know. So that's the, that's the business side of it. I like to start with that sometimes because I don't want people to think that I just grew wings and a halo and all of a sudden just wanted to come to the rescue, like, you know, just to save everyone. That initially wasn't really the case. Um, some of it was actually pride right off the bat. You know, I was one of those guys that that thought, there, you know, you were vaping uh, antifreeze. You know, I, I was one of those guys, you know. And, and when people started to tell me the truth, I realized, there's something really, really bad going on here. You know, this just doesn't make sense. And so, you know, the, the reason why I bring up the business side of it is because this is a really big endeavor. I mean, making a movie is very expensive. Luckily, we have a pretty pretty successful production company, and so we were able to, to do that without support from any organizations whatsoever. So we actually are not funded by anybody, any organization. So no big pharma. We're going to kill those guys. And no big tobacco. They're going to look really stupid. So. Yes, you don't have to worry about that, and the reason why I got into it is because A, really big topic, that's the dream of any director, and B, um, this, I felt stupid, and I, I want to get the truth out there. Um, that's, that was the initial reasons. It's grown on me quite a bit since then. That was, we started filming back in uh, April last year, so not even a year ago, and we are all done already, but, um, you know, since that time, you know, I've gotten to know you guys, and I've gotten to hear the stories, and it's become a lot more than just a business thing. It's now, uh, it's now become personal because you guys are my friends, and 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 nobody, no neighbor, no, you know, no family member should ever have to keep smoking because they've been lied to, and, and they think that this, that vaping is worse than smoking. That's just atrocious. One of the worst lies of all time. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get the truth out there about it. So, any other questions? I've been watching your Facebook and uh, looking at some of the different places you've gone. Is there a big vaping air group in uh, Peru? Yeah, okay, so her <laughs> question was, she's been watching her Facebook post from from the early days, and yes, we, we were filming on four different continents this past year, and uh, one of the trips that we did was down to Peru, and uh, her question was, is there a big vaping uh, community down there? And the answer is no, no, there's not. We weren't down there, I mean, we're... <laughs> The, the reason we went down to Peru is two things. One, um, we're really following, you know, we felt like for, for people that didn't understand, you know, a lot of young people don't even know about what happened with smoking. Like, they don't even understand the whole history of, of uh, you know, what was going on in the 80s and the 90s and, you know, like the MSA and all that kind of stuff. 
and, and the fact that there used to be cigarette commercials on television. So we actually started all the way at the beginning of, of smoking back, and we went to Peru and found uh, tobacco plants that were growing wild. And uh, that's kind of the intro of the film. You know, we wanted to film somewhere beautiful. The opening credit sequence is a lot of uh, time lapses in uh, in Peru. So we didn't go there for the vaping community. Uh, I don't, and we did ask people, and I don't, I don't think there's much of one down there. Uh, a lot of South America is having a lot of problems with vaping. You know, they banned it in Brazil. I'm pretty sure Mexico, I believe, is also banned. A lot of places in Latin America are just, uh, they're just not big into vaping, and, and hopefully this film can help, can help change that. So, yeah, that's a great question. Next question. Uh, yeah. So, as a community, we have 17,000 theories, and, and we all feel about Big Pharma and Big Tobacco, but you actually investigate it, so how deep does it go? How hot is this topic? Yeah, his question was, he said a lot of uh, vapers have their, their theories about why why all the persecution of vaping and of course, you know, there's probably as many different ideas in, in this room as uh, people, but um, yeah, and he, his question was, during our investigation, you know, what did, what did we, what did we find out? Well, you know, it won't be as surprising for you as you might think. I mean, the bottom line is all of these businesses are very large. They have a very large amount of money. They have a lot of influence. You know, Big Pharma, not only do they have a lot of money, but they pretty much control the whole medical industry because of all the sponsorships that they do. They sponsor medical conferences. They sponsor the speakers at the medical conferences. They sponsor all of the big charities that you're always hearing about that are all against vaping. They pretty much sponsor everything. They sponsor research. They sponsor universities, you know. How many of you have heard of Stanton Glantz? Raise your hand if you heard of him. Yeah. He's yeah. Uh, that guy out in California um, that's Dr. Glantz, even though he's, he just has a PhD in uh, physics, I believe, or something like that. He's an engineer. He's an engineer, yeah. But he <laughs> likes to call himself Dr. Glantz. But uh, his, his university is, gets huge amounts of money from Big Pharma. And I'm 99% I'm sure as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. But he's getting money as well, his, his department is. He says he doesn't get that money, and he's probably correct about that, but he does get a pretty big paycheck. So, you know, if you think about that, you know, the money coming down just in the sponsorships, that's a, that's a lot of influence and a lot of power. Uh, and then you got the whole lobbyists as well. So, I mean, that's that's one thing. I personally think that uh, the pharmaceutical industry, you know, is, is a big part of this. Of course, it's very, very complex, and we try to handle that as much as we can in the film because... It's not easy, you know, it's easy just to say, oh, Big Pharma, or it's Big Tobacco. Um, certainly Big Pharma, there's evidence that, that we've seen from them lobbying in the European Union uh, against e-cigarettes. They, they're pretty clear about that. They think, you know, because they make nicotine products that they want to have an equal, you know, but it's, it's kind of BS. Um, so you got them, you got, you know, obviously Big Tobacco is, you know, they like selling cigarettes. They also have vapor products in some cases, so... That's kind of tricky, and obviously there's more than one company. You know, that's another thing too is, you know, each of these companies is their own big giant too. You know, we could say things like Big Pharma, but there's a lot of big companies in Big Pharma, and the same goes with tobacco. So it's not super simple. Um, personally, I think what, what what happens in the movie, we go through this thing called uh, the Baptist and the Bootleggers. It's a theory in in uh, economics, which I studied back in school, where uh, in some of the southern states here in the U.S. there are um, you know, some of these dry counties, you know, where they don't allow alcohol sales maybe at all or on weekends or after certain times. But you have the people that break the rules and they'll sell, they'll sell pretty much any time. They're called the bootleggers. You know, I know uh, back in the day, you know, with the Dukes of Hazard and some of that, it's a little bit more amusing. But they still have that all going on today. People that will sell liquor at any hour, any time. Um, they're called the bootleggers. So you have every so often these these uh, rules go up for a vote again. You know, are we going to be a dry county? You know, the debate is rekindled. And what you see is, is you find that, you know, some of the, the pastors of the churches who think that alcohol is evil, um, they obviously come out against it. And what you'll find is that some of these groups are getting financing, you know, some of the, the anti-alcohol people get financing from the actual bootleggers because it helps the bootleggers when it's illegal because they're actually willing to sell it. So they make money from it. So what Basically, what you know to simplify this whole situation. Basically, it's you have the people that actually just think nicotine and addiction and, and all that are bad, 
they're ignoring that smoking is worse and they just want to be against, you know, they want to be against nicotine. And so they're out there, and I think some of them are true believers. They actually believe that this is bad. I mean, vaping, or because of nicotine, and nicotine, and nicotine. I mean, they just say this stuff like they know what nicotine is, and I don't think they really do. But um, those people are getting funding from the people that make money from cigarettes and from pharmaceutical industries. If you think about it, I mean, Dimitri mentioned $120 billion in, in cancer. Uh, I've seen numbers as high as 150 billion. That's just cancer. Think about COPD and all the other respiratory diseases. Uh, smoking is pretty good for business. I mean, it helps a lot of people. They're making billions of dollars from smoking because if you got rid of smoking tomorrow, just think of all the people that'd be out of business. Think of all the stock stockholders and all these people that just would be devastated financially. I mean, there is a huge vested interest in this, and that's not even conspiracy theory or anything like that. I mean, just look at look at the amount of sales of medicines that treat smoking related things look at people you know a lot of the doctors that come out against vaping you look at them and they're actually like cancer doctors it's like hmm, that's interesting um, so yes it's kind of complicated but you have people that believe against nicotine and you have the people that make money um, fighting vaping and they're funding each other and they're using each other's voices and yeah so the guys with the big money don't have to do the talking because there's already enough crazy people out there they can just give money to so long answer to a pretty short question but uh, yeah next, next question back there yeah when's it coming out that's a great question well we were hoping to we were hoping to come um, we we're hoping to actually launch it this month but the uh, festival that, that we were working with uh, decided not to do it, and, and we find out that they actually were sponsored by some big tobacco uh. organization. So we are um, we are going to be. This is probably the first time that anybody's really heard this in public, but we are going to be coming out in May. So the, the world premiere will be in May. Um, you guys, uh, yeah, finally, right? Although it's, <laughs> it's hardly even been a year. So I know everyone's very eager, but a lot of these documentaries take multiple years to make. So I'm feeling really good about how fast we're doing this, but I get it, it's a serious situation and, and we, and I don't take that lightly, I see a lot of comments. Every time we post anything, there's always people, um, you know, on the Billion Lives Facebook or whatever, that are just like, get the film out, quit talking, and just get the film. <laughs> yeah, well, we're waiting, you know, we're waiting. We have to wait on stuff too, it's unfortunate, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, the uh, it will be out in May. It, most likely the world premiere will be will not be in the U.S. as weird as that sounds, but we're trying to make a big statement in helping people that, that need this truth out even more here. Um, we will have some very big events here in the U.S. I rest assured the U.S. premiere will be crazy big and you guys will all be invited to come to it. Um, it's gonna be crazy. Um, we're gonna be doing events all over the country though. A, a lot of people have uh, stepped up um, until we get the, the Hollywood support to get into like all the theaters. Um, we're going to be having uh, after parties at, uh, that will be sponsored and uh, that will be bringing, our, bringing a premiere to various different cities all over the country. So a lot of people have stepped up. It's really fun to see. We do have the film is sitting with uh, some executives in Hollywood who said they really like it and they're just checking with everyone and their mother and legal and on and on. So, you know, we'll, hopefully we'll be having, you know, some really, really big news as far as like hundreds of theaters coming out. Um, but right now, yeah, we'll probably end up having some really big premieres, film festivals, and then a month or so later it'll be in theaters, and then, you know, a couple months later then it'll be on DVD and Blu-ray and all that, and then maybe on some sort of streaming service. So that's kind of, and that's kind of what we were thinking from day one. I know we said early this year. May, I don't think I would call May early, but it's still spring, so <laughs> I don't know, it's in the first half of the year, but yeah, I think... I would have liked to have it out actually this month, but sometimes that, that, that stuff happens. Next question, back there in the corner. question that would probably be better suited for Dimitri or Phil, but you spoke about how big um, back in the corner have all this money. How do you trust what they say by quote with people, doctors? I mean, if you hear a doctor, oh, she's a doctor. Because I've come across this several times. If I heard a doctor, whatever, on TV say they did that, how do you find that and find people Right, well, his question was, you know, with all the money there, how can you trust certain doctors and how do we, you know, know where to go and what messages to promote? Well, we did travel around the world and we got, in our film, we actually have a former executive director of the World Health Organization. We also have the former president of the World Medical Association. So these are pretty much the two main doctors that, 
that were in the anti-smoking fight back in the day and are basically the chief, some of the chief doctors in the whole world. So they are in the film. One of them uh, does flat out say that he was wrong about vaping and that it was a mistake. And, uh, you know, we think that having the best doctors in the world in the film um, saying the kind of things you want them to say is going to help, of course. I mean, the bottom line is just because someone's a doctor, you can't trust them. That's unfortunate. But just like you can't trust technically a lot of people, I mean, it's really going to be one of those things where you got to look at all the different people and what they're saying and kind of just find, you know, eventually there's truth out there. And I think we all kind of know the truth. This is, vaping is way better for you than smoking. I don't think anybody, you know, would really disagree with that. But when you see these people sidestepping and not really answering that question where they say, well, maybe it is or maybe it isn't, you know that they're probably got something wrong with them. And it, once you educate them and they still don't want, you got to say, um, these, these people are probably, you know, unfortunately they're tied in with the wrong folks probably. And, uh, and there are lots of those people. We, we made this film, you know, for the public, for the doctors, for the, uh, you know, for the news media, for politicians, people that don't understand. And, and if a doctor watches this film and then they're still against vaping, I think you have to just really question whether their heart's in the right place and, and where the money's coming from. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. There's no real good answer for that, though, other than we've got some good doctors in there and um, their leaders, and they say the right thing, and if other doctors don't agree, then they're probably corrupt, so. Yeah. Sorry, I got another one. No, it's all right. Do, do, do you still need our help in getting us in our local theaters? Yeah, so, you know, we had put out kind of uh, an email asking for help. You know, we're, we're exploring the possibility of all these different theaters. Um, I know there was like this big petition to get AMC and these <laughs> the AMC theaters, which I think is the biggest theater company in the world, uh, we were talking to them because of you guys, it was kind of crazy. Uh, a lot of it has to do with this whole Hollywood business model. You know, it's the same model that Big Tobacco is trying to do with vaping is they would like to have there be like this middleman distributor business that you have to go through and unfortunately it looks like the main theaters, they really just work with certain distributors for whatever reason, I mean, it's, it has to do with money and politics. We're gonna be in theaters, there's a lot of independent theaters and that's the main thing that we need to probably focus on right now because those folks will will play our movies and we are having really good talks with these guys and we're, that's partly why we're gonna be in various different theaters. Um, but yeah, the big boy theaters are gonna need some, some help with Hollywood and so that's kind of the main reason why we need everyone's help, like sharing and, and being active on social media. And you guys have been, it's been crazy. I mean. It, that, that teaser we have on Facebook was shared almost 10,000 times now. Uh, other thing we post, I mean, we've been getting 2,000 shares on stuff. I mean, that's a lot of noise. So you guys are definitely getting the attention of, of the Hollywood industry. And uh, like I said, we're having really good talks with them. But uh, until we actually get a distribution deal, the big theater companies won't probably be on board. Uh, unless we just have a really good, crazy uh, experience with these first premieres. And, uh, and you know, kind of, set the record straight on how big of a film this is going to be. So I think that's kind of the debate right now. I mean, there's however many, 9 million vapors in the U.S., who knows how many in Europe, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 million over there. Um, why do you only have 30,000 followers? You know, they, they ask these kind of questions, like, do they not care about the film? And I, I think just like anything that does, you're not going to get the majority of people on liking Facebook or whatever. It's just not a good way to, you know, to decide whether something's going to be interesting or not. So. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing there's people right here that are interested in the film that aren't following the page. That doesn't mean you don't care about the film. So, we're, you know, that's just the easy questions that they have. But uh, we don't need help probably contacting AMC anymore. I, they heard the message loud and clear. <laughs> um, but we, yeah, certainly if there's, um, you know, film festivals or local independent theaters in your area, we certainly do want to be having conversations with them. So, yeah, great question. Now, you said earlier that first you thought that we were vaping antifreeze kind of thing. Yeah. When you first were thinking about it, did you were you starting out on that road, or did it change during the process, or did it change before you decided to do yeah, it? Yeah, that's a great question. So she asked me, she said, you at one point thought that people were vaping antifreeze. You know, did you start off the film with that mindset? And uh, no, before we, before I decided to do the film, I did a lot of research, you know, beforehand. and. It clearly come to the understanding that the truth was really quite simple. You know, you have something with nicotine and tar versus something with nicotine. Which one is going to be better for you? Clearly, the one without the tar is going to be better for you. This is just the simplest, simplest, 
simplest thing ever. You don't even need to be a scientist to understand that. Um, you know, carbon monoxide and all this other stuff, and then, oh, you have like propylene glycol, which, you know, is in fog machines at the nightclub, you know? Like, so I, I knew that, I already knew that it was healthier. The question was how much, and, you know, I, we certainly came in with a very neutral mindset from it, wanting to tell the story for the public. You know, they're the ones that were interested in it. Um, I'm not really that unbiased anymore. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty convinced that I'm pretty angry about it. So, yeah, so, no, we didn't start filming with your vaping, uh, you know, your vaping antifreeze, but, you know, we were, we're a little more neutral early on. So, great question. Next question. Yeah, yep. how many different people did you talk to? How frustrating was it when you ask them something so simple like, how can you not say that they think it's less harmful and they couldn't give you an eye of cancer, like you were saying earlier, when they're probably laying in front of every single people and they just couldn't agree with you? And how do you do that? Right, so the question was, you know, with all the kind of crazy people, yeah, with all these, you know, there's these doctors that, uh, you know, maybe wouldn't answer questions and whatnot. How frustrating was that? Well, actually, none of our interviews were very frustrating because, as weird as this is going to sound, um, people are, are quite clear about what documentaries do. And so we actually didn't have any interviews with anybody who didn't like vaping because they wouldn't take any interviews. So. Um, but we were obviously able to get plenty of uh, plenty of them on the record. A lot of them do television. A lot of them do that. So they're represented in the film. And uh, <laughs> so, but no questions. Yeah, they wouldn't. Uh, we were turned down for every single interview for anyone of Big Pharma or anybody. Although Stan Glantz did say he would do the interview, but then would never respond to emails. So he he's kind of a big loser and uh, and a liar. <laughs> so. That's okay, you know, these guys, he's probably was smart not to, you know, but that's how they, they know what it's gonna be. I mean, everyone knows, they, a lot of the people like the FDA and the CDC were like, well, what side of vaping are you on? They would ask us that. And I'd say, well, we're, you know, we're taking a neutral approach. I mean, I want the interview, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, make it sound like we're some crazy vaping people, but I, the fact that we weren't anti-vaping, they quickly said no, so. You know, I guess that's to be expected though, because they don't want to get, you know, they don't want to be put in a movie where they look, look bad. But they're going to be in a movie then they look bad. So I, they might as well have just taken the dumb interview. I mean, that would have been, been fine. But I don't think it's going to matter either way, because like I said, these guys are on TV so, so, so often. You know, like Frieden, he's all over the movie, even though he wouldn't take the interview. So I think it's probably better if he would have just answered the questions, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Big Pharma is pretending like we don't exist. I think, uh, I mean, they're pretending in public, but I think they're quite aware of it. We reached out to all of them for interviews. Um, they all declined, so they knew about the film early on. Um, someone hacked our website the other day. I have no idea who that was, but uh, maybe Big Pharma. Big Tobacco, yeah, one of the companies did actually reach out to us, and they were pretending to be very helpful in all of this. Um, I think they were just trying to get a sneak peek at how bad it was going to be. Um, but yeah, they were not very helpful. And so, yeah, I mean, I think tobacco likes to ride the line of being, you know, I mean, potentially, you know, big tobacco could be quite helpful, theoretically, if they would just say, well, I think we're going to phase out cigarettes in the next five years, and we're going to get into vaping products, and we're going to make them worldwide, and we're going to make them easily accessible for smokers. But, you know, I don't know, that that's a pipe dream. But they could theoretically be very helpful. And initially I was willing to believe that maybe they had learned their lessons and maybe they were gonna grow up finally and care. But I, I've met these guys now and uh, now they're losers, you know. <laughs> they are really, they just, they just can't think about doing fulfilling work that helps people. They just can't, they just got too much money. They're, they're not evil, but they're not moral either. They just don't care about humans, you know. And, I don't. Right, yeah, they just see numbers, and, and I mean, they're, they're making billions and billions of dollars, and, uh, you know, I just, I don't know how they wake up every day and go to work, but um, they have the chance, they just don't care about it, they've, I, it's possible someday that some of the big tobacco companies will get more, be more helpful for our film, I don't, I don't expect that, because uh, the first 20 minutes is basically uh, reminding everybody about how bad they were, so... I can't imagine they're going to like it. No, I don't think they're going to be liking it. So, yeah. Any other questions? 
Yeah, it's back to something that Phil said and you and I talked about yesterday. Uh, remind people about how people view us. Oh, right. While making the film, what did you get about people, like the, our big clouds and our and right. chugging and our stuff? What did you see while you were trying to make Right, so being a non-smoker, non-vapor, his question kind of was, well, what was your perspective on this whole thing when you come through, you know, like big clouds and all that? You know, I... After knowing the, you know, knowing the truth, after researching it ahead of time, before filming, really went into this project basically saying, well, how can we, if we believe that, if we find out and believe, confirm that the truth is that vaping is much safer than smoking and that this is a way for people to save their lives, um, well, how do we help them? Because the vaping industry just looks terrible. I mean, I, I'm from a marketing background and it's like, just, I mean, whether it's, I don't want to get too specific with some of the stuff that I see. You know, some of these labels are even just like crazy, like having, I don't know, I'm not going to get specific with anyone in here, but um, there are definitely some, there's some things that just look terrible, and, and we keep talking about it, but people keep doing it, and I, and I don't think that people are doing this stuff on, ex, or on purpose. Like, really, what you got is a lot of young people that are just, uh, you know, they're excited, they have a business, they have a really talented um, palette, like they can come up with some really great juices and they're making money and that's awesome. I think that's amazing. The only thing is I just don't think a lot of the business owners in the vaping industry really know anything about marketing. They're obviously not doing a lot for their own businesses with advocacy and supporting. I mean, my goodness, if I was making this much money from an industry, I would be putting probably 10 to 20% of it into lobbying because it's under threat and it's going to be gone. And I'd love to keep making the five, six, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a year off of my business and I would be pumping a lot of money into that and if everyone in this industry did it, so you could just tell that the industry is young, it doesn't know what it's doing, it looks bad, the, the marketing, you know, some of the labels, the graphic design that I see in this industry is just terrible, it looks very stupid and, and I, I'm saying this is what the public thinks of, of the industry is like, why is everything so cluttered, why is it just so weird and just like, what is this, you know, I, Every time I end up in, you know, like seeing some of it, and early on it was like, oh, so we gotta help, we gotta help these guys. <laughs> and I know that sounds bad, but I mean, I'm being honest. The honest answer is, um, yeah, all this, every time you guys want, not you guys, I don't wanna say it like that, but every time, you know, it seems like pictures. The other day, I was on a TV show, a mainstream TV show, and the host is an Emmy Award winning gal. Her brother is a smoker. Her other brother killed himself. She doesn't want to lose her brother. She's very passionate about this. Was really curious about vaping after we did the segment. Her, she, she I, I told her about a vape shop that I knew um, in Milwaukee that was good. She brought in her brother and they got the thing. Then they wanted to take a picture with her. Sure enough, the picture she sends me, the two guys are blowing clouds while they take the picture. What do you, I mean, if she posts that thing on Facebook, what are people gonna think? You got in, you're in with a bunch of weirdos. Why are they blowing clouds? I thought you guys were trying to quit smoking. Why are you so excited about the clouds? You know, and that's the honest look. I mean, why, why so big clouds? Why do you, I mean, I get it. I think it's, if that's what you do for fun, great. I actually think that's good as long as you stop smoking. But I mean, if that's what you want to do. Again, I'm one of those people, I don't care if people want to smoke, but when you want to get off of it, we got to give you the options. But, um, so as far as like big clouds, that's great. Um, but in public, like, my goodness, guys, that's the main reason. I, I would say if every if every vapor was like a lot of you guys and you were just sincere and you were, you know, you knew what you were talking about and you weren't throwing big clouds everywhere, movie, most of the public people I know when I tell them about this movie, they just look at me like, what are you doing? Like, they don't understand. They think I look, I mean, I think it's funny because in the long run, I think I'll be right and I think I'm pretty excited about that. But in the short run, a lot of people think I'm, I've lost it. They literally have just said, you're crazy, what are you doing? And partly they always have a story. Yeah, I was in the movie theater, some guy blew some giant cloud right in front of the screen. They just hate that. Because they've been told secondhand smoke is so dangerous. They don't know what's going on. All they know is people are, are blowing the smoke. And it sucks for you guys, because you guys are the smart ones, but there's still people out there doing really stupid stuff. And, and unfortunately, that's what the public sees. It only takes one bad apple to ruin the whole bunch. And unfortunately, that's what um, you know. That's what what I've seen. Um, I've seen a lot of amazing people who are so sincere about this topic. They just want to help people. They don't blow big big clouds. They, they they're really you know they make little little. But when it's this big, loud, crazy 
clouds, they'd just say, you're obviously still kind of proud of that whole thing. So, yeah, it's tough. But that's the perception. Bad graphic design, big clouds, that stuff is really hurting the industry quite a bit. Sorry, I don't like to have to say that stuff, but... It's the truth, we need to know it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I can't... What's that? Did we cover any of the negative aspects of vaping in the film? Well, you know, we do talk about what nicotine is. Um, you know, we don't, I mean, I don't know personally a whole lot of bad things about vaping, <laughs> to be honest. So we do talk about what they say, and we, we discuss that real clearly, you know, whether, you know, whether nicotine is the deadly drug of nicotine. You know, we talk a lot about it. The, some of the best scientists in the world say it's a lot like caffeine. It's very clear. Right. Right, we do talk about the whole gateway thing, whether kids are turning into cigarette smokers from this. And I mean, we do talk about that stuff. We don't, you know, only because the people that, you know, are out there saying the negative things, we do want to give we want to bring that stuff up and, and discuss it in an intelligent way. So yeah, but as far as the negative things about vaping, yeah, we don't really, we didn't find anything really that bad about vaping. As we're, I mean, the 95%, I, I kind of wonder if it's even 95 or if it's more like 99 or 99.9 .9 or something like that. I've never heard of anyone dying from vaping. Yeah, some somebody let their knee drink their pure, your uh, nicotine bottle, which is obviously a major tragedy, but kids die in swimming pools all the time, and, and that's a, just as bad of a tragedy, but we don't ban swimming pools, you know, and so we, there's a lot of things, though, and, and the movie's only 90 minutes. At one point, we had a four-hour film, and we had to cut down from that, so we cover the main things, and, and clearly, uh, you know, debunking a lot of that kind of stuff, and, and just kind of setting the record straight, using doctors and scientists to do it, so a lot more reputable than just you know, we don't have, some people were wondering, you know, whether we have any of these amazing advocates or, you know, some of the, the big celebrity, you know, like Dimitri or Phil, are they in the film? And actually, no, we don't have, um, I don't know if we really have any vapors in the film, as weird as that sounds. <laughs> oh, that's not true. We did take submissions from people that wanted to be in the film, and we do have a couple people that will be in the film kind of telling that story just because we felt like it'd be good to hear from the actual users, but... None of the actual debunking comes from vapors just because people say, well, you obviously have a business interest in this. So we were sensitive towards that. We know what the public needs. If they want to, if they're going to be convinced, they need, they need to feel like the information is coming from an unbiased source. And so, um, yeah, so yes, we did deal with a lot of those things. And, but no, I didn't really find anything too bad about vaping. So <laughs> any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, dude. No, it's so good. Hey, I mean. It's, it's good, so, that's what I'm here for. So, once the movie is said and done and it's out, and a few months later, are you guys are going to revisit it, this topic again in a couple of years or something? Yeah, well, the, yeah, that's a question I get all the time is, well, what's next? You know, are you guys going to do a follow-up to this? Well, right now, we're I'm definitely thinking about the next movie, and I'm thinking about calling it something like The, the Problem with Big... And it's not going to be just about vaping, but I'd like to have something that's even more focused on stuff that the public cares about. I mean, I don't think the public cares that much about vaping. I think people that are related to smokers and people that are related to vapors, which is a lot of people. Um, so I think a lot of people will care about a billion lives. I think what people are even more concerned about is the, the corruption and weird influence of money in all of politics and in almost all of our daily, you know, our daily life is in some ways being really controlled buy big money and big, you know, lobbyists and government is just not doing anything anymore unless there's huge money behind it. It's a sort of disaster. And so I think what we want to do is kind of look at, you know, what's the problem with all this big money and uh, big companies and, and what do they do to the little guy and that kind of a thing, which will include the discussion about this and what's going on. I'm hoping that the film, that film won't be about the death of this industry, but it's possible that might be the film that, uh, that shows how an industry is killed. I hope that's not what, what it'll be about, but um, it is going to be about how that almost happened, hopefully. That's the goal. So if uh, A Billion Lives gets out there enough, um, we, we hopefully won't have that situation, but um, you know, I think that's, that'll be the next one will be how, do, how does big business get their way and why is that such a bad thing? So you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poor, why is that? 
And I think we, I have the answer to that now. So we're going to make the movie about that, basically. But no, nothing. We won't have a billion lives, too, or anything like that, probably. <laughs> Yeah, two billion lives. Yeah, maybe in like 200 years, I think. Because uh, by then, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we won't have. I think they're saying in the next 20 years there'll be 1.6 billion smokers on the planet. So that means in the next 20 years there'll be 600 million new smokers. Smoking's not going away, folks. It's only getting bigger. And uh, I know that sounds crazy, but uh, the population's getting bigger, and a lot of these these countries are getting more money, and the people in them are getting more money, and they're they're learning about smoking. So vaping is something that. Ultimately, might might help. Uh, literally, might help save you know multiple billion. Yeah, like maybe two billion lives. But that'll be I'll be dead by then. So, yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. What question? What question would you most like to hear? What question would I most like to hear? Jeez, wow. <sighs> I don't know. I get a lot of questions almost every day. Like I, I think I get about 100 emails a day. So. I don't know if there's any questions I want to hear. Um, more like how, yeah, I mean, I guess the question I always love is when people ask how to help, but everyone's been asking how to help. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is the best way to help is right now for you guys is just to keep being active on social media, helping get the word out there. We think, I personally think this is the best chance that, that this community has to get the public, you know, made aware of what's going on. Because, you know, like a lot of these other campaigns that you see going on are just, they still are not geared towards the public. They just don't, the public is not buying a lot of this stuff. Some of the billboards I see, they're not doing it. They're not doing the job. Do you have any idea why we're not seeing like any nationwide commercials or anything? Yeah, well, I know why you're not seeing nationwide commercials. And his question was, well, you know, why aren't we seeing that? Yeah, it's because they won't run them. You know, they're not going to... I, I know that uh, we have a hard enough time with Facebook. You know, at one point they weren't letting us advertise anymore because they said we were a tobacco product, which just doesn't make sense for a movie. Um, and that's another reason why this problem with Big needs to get made the next film. Because yeah, I mean, Facebook and eBay. How many of you guys have tried to buy, you know, mods or something or whatever, and you can't buy them on eBay or PayPal? Won't I mean, these are some major problems that these big businesses control such a big segment, but they also control the media and and big pharma has uh, probably the majority of the, besides like maybe automobiles, the biggest chunk of advertising going on. And they control a lot more. And, and basically we've been told, we've been told by uh, other people that have tried to do advertising that they weren't, it wasn't approved. You did see Blue do, do something, I think, uh, they did some sort of commercial early on. And you see some of those, but I don't think you're seeing much of that anymore, so. It's not because there isn't money. There's plenty of money from some of those companies. They just, they're not being allowed to do it. Yeah, back there. Yeah, what was the most shocking thing that I found? Yeah, well, oh, gosh, so much, so much shock. I think the most shocking thing for me is is when I find out the American Lung Association. I mean, they're, aren't they supposed to be helping people's lungs? I mean, how ridiculous is this? You go in, you're a smoker, they, your doctor sees your lungs are in trouble. You have the beginnings of COPD, you need to stop, you're in trouble. You do, you switch to vaping. A year later, you get the same test. Oh, you have non-smoker's lungs. Why would the Lung Association be all about that? Why wouldn't they be? And we know why. There's no other reason why other than the money. There's no reason. There is absolutely, there cannot be a reason. Look at the science. Clearly your lungs. I mean, I, I'd be super shocked if any of you in here are getting emphysema from vaping. Or if you were getting, it doesn't, it, no one's ever heard of such a thing. It, it doesn't happen. And, and these guys, they know it. They're the lung people. They're the freaking lung people. And yet they're still saying, well, I don't know. Well, we don't recommend it. Just use the gum, which we know doesn't work. Money, you know, and so that's shocking to me that you would literally be a charity with the job of saving people's lungs, and you would not be saving lungs because it's not financially intelligent. That's just wrong. That that's probably the most shocking. I mean, there's been plenty of those moments, but that's probably the one. Or these fake tests, like the formaldehyde one. We're gonna burn the liquid, and we're gonna declare that the formaldehyde's going. Yeah, no one's burning the liquid. I mean, maybe the first time you. Maybe your first time vaping, you might accidentally burn the liquid, but you're not doing that very long because it doesn't taste good. So, for everyone to get on board and be like, yep, formaldehyde, it's coming. Yeah, formaldehyde. No, that's, 
and for a scientific journal to put that out, I mean, come on, really? We're gonna burn the liquid? You burn anything. You start burning, you know, you burn your toast, you're gonna get cancer from that. You're gonna get formaldehyde from burning your toast. It's easy, you can always get formaldehyde, you just have to burn it. So we can make everything you want illegal. We could ban hot dogs. They make formaldehyde, you know? Any other questions? Don't feel bad, I don't know how much time I got yet, but uh, if you got a question, I'm here for you. How'd you feel, how do you feel the movie came out? How do I feel that movie came out? Yeah, I mean, you know, from a creative standpoint, there's always that, you know, I th say around December, I was just like, uh, you know, I just wasn't happy with it. But uh, we made some pretty big changes to it, cut some stuff down, added some different things, shot some more stuff, and I feel like it's pretty good right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, for the topic, I mean, this is, there's a lot of drama with, you know, the money and whatnot. It's a really confusing thing because you know most people going into the theater are thinking you're crazy. They're just dragged there probably by a vapor. <laughs> So we got to overcome that, you know, and so, you know, we certainly take a very educational approach to it, you know, going back into the history and kind of, I think, um, I think a lot of the younger people that have seen the film and, and some of our focus groups are like shocked by what we put in there. Some of the other people like, I know, I know, let's just get to the vaping. So I think people will be, uh, you know, I think people will definitely be very intrigued. I mean, we have uh, a Flintstones commercial in there where the Flintstones are smoking and I mean, that stuff's shocking to younger people because they've never seen that before, but uh, I think the film turned out pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, and uh, I wasn't always happy with it, but I mean, that's why we were working so hard to get it to where we wanted it to be, and that's just the nature of creative processes. You know, sometimes you're not happy with it, and you get picky. I'm pretty picky, so I'm pretty happy with it now. Any other questions? It's okay if you've asked before. <laughs> yeah. Put it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we're going to get this thing out, and uh, yeah, I think finally, you know, I heard when Phil and uh, Dimitri were talking, you know, there was that whole talk about the doctors, you know, they're being afraid, you know, it's not just the money, I don't know that the average doctor is actually getting paid by Big Pharma, you know, but they're still afraid, why? Because these guys are, are your doctors are really, really busy, and they're, they aren't doing the research, they're basically taught to listen to their, their leaders. And um, a lot of them know the truth, but they're afraid because they don't want to be kicked out of their little club of cool doctors. And so we think the film will help because it's going to let these doctors know, hey, you're not the only one. These are some of the best doctors, top doctors in the world. And they're saying, you ought to be ashamed of yourself if you're just still telling your patients, we don't know. That if, when you tell your patients, well, we don't know if vaping's better, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're hurting them and you might end up causing them to, to die sooner than they need to die. So we, we think that will help. Um, you know, the film doesn't have a lot of, another question I get a lot is, is there a lot of uh, cool mods and technology in there? We don't really go into that stuff. Uh, this is mostly about the, the corruption and the failure of the government and, and some of that kind of stuff. And then just kind of what is vaping and what do people think about it in the scientific community and whatnot. But so yeah, if you're, if you're looking for the biggest new box mod, it won't be in the film. We don't want it to be dated. We know you guys get like new giant mods every like two weeks, so by the time the film came out, it'd already be old. So we were kind of focused on the long term. We think in a hundred years, people will still be watching this film, saying, "Holy crap! How could we have let this happen?" You know, I'm really looking to the next hundred years for this will be a historical film that really kind of just lays that all out. So I, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to see it. Any last questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna let you guys get going. And then, uh, yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Have some fun. Uh, have some fun with the movie when it comes out.